All right, so this is going to be the last day of the unit, day three. This is gonna focus on the quiz, quiz problems. Um, remember that when we were finding our dot products, there's three different ways to do it. There's algebraic, geometric, and the projection. So depending on what you're given is what you're gonna to wanna to use. If you're given two vectors, then you would use the algebraic. If you're given a vector and magnitude and angle, um, things like that, you're gonna use geometric. If you're um, given, let's see, um, where you have these two vectors, vectors and you have the cosine of theta, then that's gonna be when you wanna use projection. So let's go ahead, let's kind of look at this, let's review. So again, we're given the angle between the vectors, different than cosine of theta. So we're given the angle between the vectors, then we wanna use geometric. And if you recall that geometric formula is u dot b, the dot product is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of theta. All right, so here's what I wanna do. I need to figure out, so here's my formula box, it's so obvious. So I know what theta is. The angle between the vectors is my theta value. So in this case, theta is equal to 120. I have my magnitude of V. The only thing I don't have is this magnitude of U, but that's easy to find because we know our vector. We know our vector, so it's easy to find that magnitude. So what I would wanna do is, uh, let me open up my chat really quick. Of course, if you guys have questions, you can unmute yourself or throw it in the chat. Um, okay, so if I want to find the magnitude of u, since I already know the vector, it's easy peasy. It's the square root. I square the first term and I add it to the square of the second term. So it's going to be the square root of one plus square root of three squared is just three. And I end up with the square root of four, which is so nice and pretty. So my magnitude of u is just two. So I plug everything into my formula over here then. And this tells me then that my dot product of u dot v is going to be two times magnitude of v, which is six times cosine of 120 degrees. And I could just throw all that in my calculator if I wanted to. Again, when you're plugging in the calculator, you can plug the whole thing in super easy. You of course can figure out two times six is 12. You should know and you're, you're, what you're, this is from your unit circle as well. So multiple approaches, or you could just do two times six times my cosine of 120. It all just goes in just like that. And there you go. And you get your value of negative six. There's my answer. It's the only thing, um, only answer. There's only one answer here. It's always gonna be some type of scalar product. When you find the dot product, it's always gonna be some type of numeric value, just a single real number. All right, so this one, my next one, very similar, very similar. They give you the angle between the vector. They give you the angle between the vector. That means that you know your cosine of theta value the angle between the vector, this tells me that theta is equal to 45 degrees. They also give me the, my two vectors. So how do I know that I want to use my geometric again? Because they give me my angle between the vectors and they give me these two vectors, I can easily find that using this value, these, finding the magnitude of each of these. I can figure out all the pieces. We did partially it here but they gave us one. This one, we have to do it for both, find that magnitude, the length of the vector, the magnitude. So again, this is gonna be geometric again. And I like to write the formulas for you guys each time so that you guys can see what I'm using to help follow along. So it's the magnitude of U times the magnitude of V cosine of theta. So when I go ahead and I do this, I know that my magnitude of u is going to be, then I'm using these values here, the square root of three squared plus two squared is equal to the square root of nine plus four, which is just the square root of 13. Perfect. There's my magnitude of u. We need to find the magnitude of v now. 
So it's going to be the square root of one squared plus five squared is equal to the square root of one plus 25, which is going to give me the square root of 26. I plug it all in. So I go to my formula over here. I'm going to plug everything in. And when I plug it in, I get my dot product is going to be equal to the magnitude of u. So square root of 13 times the square root of 26 times my cosine of theta. So it's cosine of 45 degrees. And I plug all this into my calculator. When I plug it all into my calculator, I get just the value of 13. Do you guys want to see the calculator work for that? Or are you guys okay plugging stuff into the calculators? Okay, okay, so I'll go ahead and continue. All right, so my next one, it says that I am given these two vectors and I'm given that cosine of theta is the square root of two over two. So this one, I could just use my dot product. I could just, or sorry, use my geometric. I could because they gave me the two vectors and they told me this whole cosine theta value. So I wouldn't plug in cosine of square root of two over two. This whole piece right here, this whole piece would be this value. This, see that's cosine theta. So that whole piece would equal your square root of two over two. I could absolutely just use that. But they also asked the piece of what is the scalar projection. So I would have to use my projection in order to solve this or at least that piece because I need to find it anyways. So it's kind of how they get you to use that in your multiple choice test or quizzes. So here's what the projections are. So if you remember, so in this case, this is going to be a geometric, or sorry, this is going to be a projection. And so remember for my projections, I have u project onto v is the magnitude of u cosine of theta. Then the dot product, u dot v is the is just this projection of u onto v, u onto v times the magnitude of v. So for both of them, we'd have to find the magnitude of v, and then we could just go ahead and plug in the value. So just basically breaking it apart very similar in their thought process. Okay, so I need to find this projection of u onto v. Projection of u onto v, that's what this number is here. So I need to find the magnitude of u. So first thing I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna do my magnitude of u is gonna be, so here's my u, it's the square root of one squared plus three squared, which is the square root of one plus nine, and it gives me the square root of 10. Oops, sorry, you guys. All right, then I'm going to go on and I'm going to plug in my values here. So this tells me then magnitude of u, square root of 10, times cosine of theta. Remember, cosine of theta, this whole thing is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. One of the biggest mistakes is you plug that value in just for theta and you do cosine the square root of two over two. That is not correct. So be careful, cosine of theta, this whole thing is equal to the square root of two over two. Throw it into your calculator, square root of 10 times square root of two and then divide it all by two. And that's gonna give me, then my projection is gonna be 2.24. So again, square root of 10 times, oh, times my square root of two divided by two, and there you go. So I eliminated these first two answers. Those both have it. So it's one of those two. So I can eliminate problems as I go through this. Okay, so now I need to figure out my piece over here, the actual dot product. So it's going to be 2.24 times my magnitude of V, but I don't know my magnitude of V yet. That's okay. We can easily figure out the magnitude of V. Magnitude of V is going to be the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared is going to be the square root of 4 plus 1 
which is just the square root of five. So this value over here, it's gonna be 2.24 times the square root of five. And I plug that on my calculator and I get that's approximately 5.00. So here's my correct answer. Here are my two pieces, done. All righty. So my next one says, what is the relationship between u and v? My vectors u and v, what is the relationship? So let's figure out what does this angle look like? So how would I know? Well, I could graph this too so you guys could get a visual if you wanted to, um, but let's look at this. u dot v. We know certain things when we do this dot product here about the relationship of that angle. We know that if I do the dot product of these, so I do one times zero plus zero times negative three, which is gonna give me zero plus zero. We know that if this dot product is equal to zero, it is orthogonal. What does it mean to be orthogonal? If it's orthogonal, they are perpendicular to, e to each other. If they're orthogonal, they are perpendicular. So if they're perpendicular, then their angles between them are going to be 90 degrees. The angles between them are going to be 90 degrees. So that's the easiest way to look at them. You can also, again, plot them and look at them and you get an idea of some of this information. You could figure out that theta value, that angle between them. Um, remember that theta is equal to cosine inverse of u dot v. So I had to find the dot product no matter what all over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So this is the angle between two vectors. So I could plug it into the formula, which the start of it would have to, would be to find that dot product, the dot product zero. So I can't solve this or I can't, it's gonna be a value of zero. It's not gonna give you an answer because they're perpendicular. So um, otherwise, so I could go through and I could figure out the magnitudes and I would get whatever other number it is. So good review of orthogonal there though, because you couldn't go any further. All right, so my next one, um, let's see. It says a force acts in the direction, a force acts in the direction of four two. So that force is vector F at four two. Okay. Moving an object along a straight path from my point two negative four to 10, one. So it's starting here and it's going to here. So I like to kind of show my arrow like that because that's gonna help me because this is just showing the displacement. So this is my initial point and this is my terminal side. It does not give me my vector. So that's why it's important that I know the direction. So when I find my vector D, to find vector D, it's going to be my terminal minus the initial. Remember, it's always terminal minus initial. So it's going to be 10 minus 2. And then it's going to be 1 minus a negative 4. So my vector D is going to be 8. A negative and negative makes that positive 5. So you're gonna to need to find your given vector F, you have to find what that displacement is, what vector D is. Then it says how much work is done by force. We need to know how much work is done, how much work. So we know our answer is gonna be in joules. So here's what we know. We know that work is equal to the magnitude of F times the magnitude of D cosine of theta. Well, they didn't give us anything about cosine of theta, but from above, 
I know my theta value here. So let me apply this. Here we're using u and v, but these are just talking about two vectors. So I can also say then that my cosine of theta, this is the whole piece. I could write it as just the angle and use inverse personal preference, but I'm looking for cosine of theta. So it's my dot product. In this case, it's going to be f and d. So it's the dot product of f and d all over, all over the magnitude of f times the magnitude of d. Okay, so here's the things that we need. So we're going to need to figure out what is the magnitude of f, what is the magnitude of d, and what is cosine of theta, and that's this piece right here. So I'm going to start right here. What is the magnitude of f? So magnitude of f then is going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 4, which is just going to be the square root of 20. I could simplify that. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I'm going to need to simplify my final answer. So let's just plug that piece in. So I know now that this f is the square root of 20. Oops, almost put 28. Okay, I need to find D. Here's my vector D. We just need to find the magnitude of D then. Magnitude of D is the square root of eight squared plus five squared, which is the square root of 64 plus 25. 64 plus 29 is 89, so it's the square root of 89. So my vector, or sorry, the magnitude of D square root of 89. Okay, cosine of theta, that's my last piece. Here's my cosine of theta is this piece right here. All right, so I need to find my dot product of F and D. What is that dot product? So the dot product, um, I'll do that. Right here. So f dot d is equal to the dot product is, I remember, multiply my first two numbers together. So four times eight plus my second numbers get multiplied together. Two times five, that's going to give me 30. Two plus 10, which is 42. So this magnitude here, sorry, the dot product here is 42. So it's 42 all over the magnitude of F, which we already found, the square root of 20 times the magnitude of D. And I plug it in right here then. This, is, this piece right here is my 42 times the square root of 20 times the square root of 89. Could I might multiply this a lot and then put it in? Absolutely. But I want to show you what happens the majority of the time. If you notice, I'm multiplying these two values are these two values. So they're canceling each other, oops, canceling each other out. So I'm left with just this value of 42 and work units are in joules. And there's my answer. So yes, I could put this in a calculator. I have a, a decimal value. I could put this all in a calculator, get the decimal value and same thing here and multiply it and use the calculator like that. You're still gonna get 42. So no matter how you wanna go about it, there are different ways. It's totally up to you. Any questions? Questions this is my last example I had for you. This one I think was the most difficult one. So a couple different pieces to it. You had to figure out what that vector D was. And then of course, just finding the magnitude and the cosine of theta. Yes, it does. Um, so I have a question for this problem right here. Does the angle equation relate to the problem? 
Yes. So if I want, if my value wasn't, if they weren't perpendicular and I plugged it in here, I would get the angle between these two vectors. I would get the angle between these two vectors. So let me kind of, um, so one zero. So here's my vector, here's my vector U. My vector V is at zero negative three. So this is graphing these vectors. Then you can easily see this angle right there was perpendicular. So this is at negative three. This was at positive one. So you can graph it and see, like if my angle was obtuse and I only had one obtuse angle, it'd be easy to pick if I looked at them graphically. So remember when you're graphing a vector, it, this is like your X, Y coordinate. So you would go and you would plot your X, Y value. And then it always starts from the origin. So I start at the origin and I go to that point. Start on my origin, go to that point. And so that's how I could look at what angle is being shaped there. And so you could see that there's a, an obtuse angle formed there. So any other questions? Um, also in regards to that, let me see if I could find that really quick. Mm, there was another assignment. Um, write it up. Did I write it down? Let's see. I don't see which one I'm talking about. If I find what I'm looking for, I'll show you guys. I'll pull it out for tomorrow. Um, I don't see it offhand. I um, find find more about that. Um, what I was going to show you, I'll, I'll show you guys tomorrow. We're going over a review. If you come up with other questions that you're not sure about for this section, again, it's just all review stuff. I'll work out problems of the review. Anything else that I come up with that I think is important, I'll make sure to note for you guys as well. So let me know if you have other questions about stuff. Um, and I'll go through. I have some word problems selected for tomorrow. Word problem couple of days, some work problems. So anything else, just let me know, you guys. I will see you guys. You guys have a fabulous afternoon um, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Thank you. Bye.